now that we have prepared ourselves well enough to be able to um, validate, redirect a user with a flash, a session flash message, um, and, and everything like that, what we're now going to do is actually register a user. And luckily enough, because we've done all this prep work, it's going to be extremely straightforward to actually get a user registered. So we're going to start to build our user class, which is the probably the second biggest or first biggest class in our database. But we can add to this as we go. We don't need to do this all in one go. Uh, we'll add this when we want to log in, register, update details, check if a user exists, uh, etc., and, and work with user profiles. So the first thing we'll do is just outline the user class. Um, and the only private uh, me uh, property we want at the moment is the DB. So on construct, we're going to uh, apply the get instance method, the static get instance method uh, of our DB class to this um, to this variable. As we've seen before, it's nothing that we haven't already looked at. So I'm going to say public function construct, um, and here what we're going to do is we're going to define. Uh, if we want to um, pass in a user value or not. So don't worry too much about that for now, but it's something to think about because when we use the user object, we're going to use the user object to get a user's data if we want to, or like for example, the current user logged in, we're going to use it to check if a user um, ID uh, has been defined uh, and then we can grab all the information associated with the user. But you know, it's something to bear in mind. The only thing we really need to do for now is set the DB property to get DB get instance uh, so we can basically make use of the database. So we need another um, method here, and this is basically going to be the ability to create a user. And it's going to only be three lines long, which is uh, fascinating, really. Um, so uh, public function create, um, we're basically going to say if um, this DB insert count so if not so if basically if this um oh sorry ever oh no we don't even need to do that because we're just inserting sorry um so uh, in here we want to obviously define what fields we want to apply when we create a user and we know that we want to apply this to the users table and we know that we want to apply the fields so fields could i guess be an empty array in the sense here um, and then if this doesn't work out, we want to throw a new exception. And we'll just say there was a problem creating an account. So, uh, sorry, throw a new exception. Um, so if this doesn't work out, we're going to throw a new exception. Otherwise, we'll just assume that everything has worked. So we have this uh, create method we can start to use it now in our register code. So if the validation passes, uh, what we want to do is, the first thing we want to do is uh, instantiate the user uh, class and create an object from this. So we want to say user equals new user. That gives us access to our database um, if it's already been uh, if it's already been uh, connected and everything. Um, and then we want to go ahead and enter user data. So what we want to do is we want to say try um, because we've thrown an exception uh, within that method, um, we'll be able to catch any problems. So catch, and this will be exception E, and we want to die with E get message. Now, this probably isn't the best functionality in terms of user friendliness. You might want to say redirect a user to a page, a specific page saying, oops, sorry, we couldn't register you or something like that. But just for now, just to um, speed things up a bit, we'll just kill the kill the script to that point. So we're going to try to say user create. Remember, this is the method that we've just created in the user object here. And in here, we're going to say a list of array, uh, uh, sorry, an array of uh, fields we want to insert. So we have a username, and we'll just go ahead and just fill these in, as we know, a password, a salt, a name, joined, and group. So the group uh, is going to be the group, we'll, we'll get to this functionality later on. So we want to generate a password, a salt, a name, uh, when they joined and group. Now, 
there are a couple of things here that we need to bear in mind. We need to be generating hashes. We need to use the hashes or use the assault against a hash. Also store assault. Um, input the join date, which isn't too difficult. But there's a few other um, classes we need to work with here, no surprise. But again, as we create these, it's going to make functionality a lot easier later on. So let's just divert quickly and take a look at the hash functionality. Um, that's all we need to deal with here. So just don't worry too much. The hash class, um, once we built this, um, and it's not long at all, three very, very, very short methods. So we have a class of hash, and this is purely for the purpose of security. We want to generate a hash, a one-way hash, um, using SHA-256, and it's entirely up to you what kind of what algorithm you use to generate the hash it doesn't really matter uh, as long as it's secure enough and you know in this case we're using a very uh, assault and anything like that so we'll explain this as we go along so we need three methods here the first one is called make and this is going to make a hash the second one is going to make a salt a public static function salt and the third one is going to, I don't actually know if we need this uh, in this functionality, uh, but it's going to make a unique um, a unique hash. So we'll, we'll include this anyway. We'll definitely be using this later on. So uh, let's say uh, public static function unique. Um, okay, so to make a um, hash, we obviously need a string to be provided, otherwise we'll just be making a random hash. Um, and we also want to apply a salt to this or not. So we're going to add it as a uh, an empty string anyway. Now, what a salt does is it, it in, improves the security of uh, a password hash because it adds a randomly generated, um, secure, hopefully, uh, string of data onto the end of a password um, that can then be used to um, add to the plain text, uh, add when we, for example, log a user in, we can add um, the salt on to then check whether the hash matches the, the, the plain text um, password. So we take the plain text string and add the salt to it, hash that. When the user logs in, they enter a password, say it would just be password. We then append the salt onto that again hash that and check if it matches the additional uh, the existing hash and the reason this makes it a little more secure is because the salt is random it means that two passwords stored as a hash won't equal each other so a password let's just say in some fantasy world hashing the term password uh, let's just divert here a little and let's say hashing the term pass or the string password is equal to one two three four five let's just say it obviously wouldn't um, now, if we were to add a salt to this, it might be something like password and then a load of random characters. That might then equal something like 1 or 999, for example. Now, if we were to do that again with another set of random characters, that might equal 555. So we're now changing, we're keeping the original password. As long as we store this salt, we'll end up with different values. And this just makes it harder um, for password values to be looked up. And, and, and uh, you know, if all password hashes are different, then we're never gonna, we're gonna never know. Just imagine a, a list of passwords in a database and everyone has chosen a, the same password. Um, if one password hash is, is um, found to equal a certain uh, character in a lookup table, or a certain string in a lookup table, then we have um, th an attacker will know everyone's password. So salting something just makes sure they're a little bit more unique. Um, you can find tons of information on salting and, and be probably better descriptions than the one I've given you. So what we're going to do here is we're going to return using the hash function and we're going to we're going to say we want to hash this in uh, SHA-256. Uh, again, go ahead and look, look these things up. And we're going to apply this as a string, but we're going to concatenate on the salt that we provide. This is either an empty string if we don't provide a salt or a um, or a salt a return salt if we do. Um, so with the salt here, we want to um, generate a salt of a particular length. And here we're going to return using this is a little bit strange using the mcrypt create iv function. And this is going to provide us with literally a load of rubbish. Um, 
and it's sorry length um, this is going to provide us with a load of rubbish and it's basically going to ensure that we have a strong enough salt um, now for the unique one uh, this is fairly straightforward all we're going to do is return self make unique ID uh, and this is basically for the purposes of returning uh, just basically making um, a hash so we don't need to worry too much about this for now because we're not going to include it in this functionality. So let's go ahead and just play around with what we've already done. If you're a little confused, let's go ahead and create a variable here, which is going to be hash salt. And we need to choose a, a particular length of hash. And I'm going to say 32 because in our database, we're storing a salt with a length of 32. So let's go ahead and just um, echo this out and we'll just kill the script there. So um, inside of our register page, uh, let's go ahead and register. So um, I will choose, in fact, let me just delete a couple of records here. Okay, so um, we've deleted that and we've, uh, in fact, we can delete this as well, I guess. Okay, brilliant. So we've got no, no records here now. Um, so let's go ahead and um, register as we normally would. So type in a password, we type in a password and we type in a name, register. And there we go, we, we get this back. Uh, if we just confirm that, oh, it's not being shown. Okay, so um, we'll see this when it's inserted into the database anyway, but we've basically generated a hash with the length of 32. Um, and we can now, in fact, we need to keep that. We can now enter this into here. So it's storing the, the salt alongside the user's details. Now for things like username, it's fairly straightforward. It's input get username. Password is going to be hash make. Remember, we've built this functionality already. Uh, and that's going to be the user's password that they've defined to us. But we're also going to inside of hash make um, to find the salt that we've generated as well, which we're also storing. It's incredibly important that you store the salt or your password will be lost. It will be pointless because if you don't know the salt that you want to append on to check, we can't find the original value so or, or compare the original value rather. So now for name, we want to say input get name and joined. Uh, it's a little different. Um, remember, we're storing a date time format in our database. Um, so we have here a date time format. This just basically means we um, instead of storing like a timestamp or something like that, we can store a human readable date here, which can be manipulated either in MySQL or back when we're in PHP. And basically what we've done here is we've said we want the year, the month and the day space hours minutes and seconds so we want that very clearly to be defined and the group's just going to be one we'll obviously get to groups and permissions a bit later in on in the series so now we're trying this user create um uh, functionality uh, let's go ahead now and just uh try and register a user so alex password password and i'll enter my full name hit register um, nothing happens in this case because we're not redirecting anywhere. We're not using our session flash functionality. We're just being redirected back to the same page. But the good news is that we don't have any errors. We, we haven't caught any exceptions. So when I browse, you can see that the data has been stored correctly. So you can see here that I've got a rather long password hash and the rather long, well, the 32 character salt, the name, the join date and time and the group that I'm in. And everything has been added to the database as we uh, would expect. So what we're now going to do is we're going to flash a session message. Um, so let's go ahead and just say session flash. Now we're going to give this a particular identifier based on where we want this to appear and I'm going to say home and I'm going to say you have been registered and can now log in and then we're going to redirect to a particular page now we'll look at the redirection in just a moment but for now I'm going to use a header redirect uh, we're obviously going to abstract this functionality and make this a little bit nicer later on but we're going to flash to home and then in home we're going to say if session um, exists 
home. Now, the reason we've done this is this is now a generic place where we can flash messages to um, and then just show basically if we want to redirect the user of the home page and say, sorry, um, we couldn't sign you in or we couldn't register you please try again we can do this um, and in this case we're just going to um, on the home page uh, just output um, echo paragraph and then in here we can just concatenate on session flash home Perfect, so let's go ahead and register a new user just to test this functionality out. So I'm gonna register username is uh, Ashley. Uh, password will just be password again, and we'll say Ashley Garrett. Click register. Um, we are redirected to the home page. When we refresh again, that message goes, but eventually we're gonna have our login and register detail, uh, links here. And if we check out the database, um, the user Ashley's been registered. Again, if you look very carefully at this, I've used the same password for Alex as I have for Ashley, but we have two different password hashes because we're using a salt, which is stored. We can check this when we sign in and therefore we provided an extra level of security to, to the, the ability to store passwords. So we've now completed the registration functionality and uh, we've redirected back to the home page. Um, we're also, we're now going to look at the ability to, um, uh, redirect because that's quite important um, and obviously then we're going to go on to more exciting things actually being able to log the user in uh, and uh, things like that.